I'm Aaron Sagers, and this is Talking Strange. Hello, uh, spooky nerds, and welcome to a bonus episode of Talking Strange, a paranormal pop culture show with the Den of Geek Network. I'm your host, journalist, author, and researcher of weird things, Aaron Sagers, also from 28 Days Haunted on Netflix and Paranormal Caught on Camera, now airing its sixth season on Travel Channel and the Max streaming service. So last week, the new A24 supernatural horror film, Talk to Me, was released. That was on July 28th. And it has been stirring up a lot of buzz with a 95% certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's been making more money than projected. I have been really digging this dark, scary, and fresh flick. I even talked about how it connects to urban legends and paranormal theories in a mini episode of Talking Strange earlier this week. So what is it about? Directed by twin brothers, Danny and Michael Filippo of the Racka Racka YouTube channel, the film begins with conjuring spirits as the latest local party craze. Looking for a, a distraction on the anniversary of her mother's death, teenage Mia, played by Sophie Wilde, is determined to get a piece of the otherworldly action. And when her group of friends gathers for another unruly seance, with the mysterious embalmed hand that promises a direct line to the spirits, they are unprepared for the consequences of bending the rules through prolonged contact. As the boundary between worlds collapses and disturbing supernatural visions increasingly haunt Mia, she rushes to undo the horrific damage before it's irreversible. And that is part of the official synopsis, really, it's a freaky and fun movie and also just like it, it's like a nasty bit of work in a, a good way. So I got a chance to talk to the directors, Danny and Michael Filippo, and these guys are hilarious. They're just so likable, but they're also really into spooky material. They even tell me about visiting haunted locations and being interested in stories of real encounters with the paranormal. They clearly clearly have thought a lot about the mythology of Talk to Me and even have a Bible for the film and for potential sequels. So let's hear from them. Uh, Danny, Michael, nice to chat with you guys. Really love the movie and also congrats on the success. Um, I don't know if anybody told you, but basically outside of being a journalist, my job is tracking folklore and talking about the paranormal and I do a bunch of TV shows. So like this is oh, wow. been very excited to talk to you guys. This the origin of the hand. Uh, so it's funny because I wrote this this article trying to explain the meaning and getting into your heads, which was uh, a very scary place to be in. But <laughs> <laughs> We, we hear that this hand is comes from a powerful medium, it's embalmed, it's traveled all, all around the world, but we don't really know, do we? So, like, where did it really come from? Are we to trust this origin that the characters are sharing at the, at the party? I think that it's Chinese whispers, and they've got this sort of homemade bong or this artifact, and it's been passed down between all these different people, and... They're all sort of guessing and they've heard different stories and whispers, but we just knew that we wanted the kids to be in over their heads and not really understand what it is that they're messing with or what it is that they're they're holding right now. So they're, Yeah, they're, they have an interpretation of the rules of the way it works, but that's not necessarily the true rules. It's like that what they've, you know, what they think it is. Something, some, some, some stuff that works for some people, like a drug can affect different people in different ways is another, another, you know. So we just wanted the kids to be in out of their depth. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, urban legends like Bloody Mary or even playing a, with a Ouija board that there's different rituals depending on the culture. So like which one is the right one? I mean, yeah, with that yeah. said, the rules themselves, you know, we get this sense that, okay, maybe 90 seconds and lighting the candle and blowing it out, th that may not be as concrete as they think either. But yeah, it's uh, we've left all little hints and clues as to, you know, 
how, how things work. And that's the fun. The fun of it is to go through and see people's different interpretations and see how they're picking things up. There's such subtle things that we put into places that people are like, oh my God, this was there. And yeah, that was, they, yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh my God, I love that people are starting to put it together. So um, we, yeah. put a, we put a lot of work into every layer of this film. Uh, so having people pick up on that stuff is... Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I like part of me just wants to explain it outright to you. Then the other part of me is like it sort of uh, uh, spoils the mystery a little bit. Uh, spoils the fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could spoil it. It, it doesn't spoil. <laughs> I mean, like, I, that, that, that's why I love peeling. You know, trying to explore it. But the what's written on the hand is that just from the people that have collected it throughout the years and passed it along, or. Uh... <laughs> I, I feel like we're gonna let you down in this interview. Um uh yeah, we don't wanna we don't wanna over explain it, we don't wanna say too much. Um yeah, I feel I feel yeah, I feel I feel bad, but yeah, I, I we do want it to for people to find it and, and to interpret it. It just, and yeah. you, you don't have to respond to it, but like it, one of my in thoughts on it was that either it's people writing on it that you know have left their own mark, or maybe it's almost like the the soul collecting of the hand itself they're leaving it's leaving a mark behind of people that have you know been sucked in or whatever yeah that's a, uh, that's an awesome awesome way to look at it too uh, <laughs> and my, my lips are sealed all right well okay <laughs> so are these spirits even trustworthy because you know um uh uh uh, uh mia's character's mom ria right like i you know she seems to be fucking around a little. I don't know if these these spirits are trustworthy. Ultimately, I think that um one thing I will say, the spirits they're, 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 they're the spirit, like to certain emotions of the person using the hand, and that like I think with with spirits in general, there are, are good spirits, positive spirits, and there are negative spirits. And, yeah, and there's uh, a lot yeah. of spirits, and then there's tormented spirits, and there's evil spirits. Predator spirits. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. there's there's one of each, and like what the people are uh, going through on a mental level, the people using their hand, that's the kind of spirits you're going to attract. And what do you mean one of each? You said one of each. There's not one of each. One of each what? Uh, no, I, I misheard you. One of each? <laughs> I even said one of each. I think you did. Let's try that. No, 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 no. <laughs> well... <laughs> It, it almost seems like they get a, you know, we get have the humans getting a high off of this, but it seems like the spirits are getting a high off of the possession as well. Well, I mean, if someone's dead and they get to feel alive again, I feel like if you definitely would get addicted to that feeling. I, I know that, um, like, like when you see, like as a kid, when you see someone drunk or on drugs for the first time, it's like a separate experience. Like that's the person I know, but it's not the person I know. It's kind of like you're like, and people say like on drugs, like I wasn't myself. I was something else. It was like something else through me, but it's a part of you. That's yeah. That's the, that's the rush of, of the, the spirits going inside. It's like someone else inside your body acting through you. Mm -hmm. And it's not, but you, you feel it all. And there's no loneliness. Like you're sharing your body and your soul with somebody. Uh, um, yeah. I feel like, yeah. Shh. All right. <laughs> I like that every question I'm asking, I'm I'm asking the right questions because I'm also getting the dead end here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm like giving you the rebound. Like, oh, these are really, like, really good. So I, I will give it to you. These are really good questions. <laughs> it, so what do the what do the spirits even want in a way? Because they seem on one hand to want to have what the living possess. You know, they want to have that sensation. But on the other hand, they are holding down Riley in this sort of limbo state. So it's like, do they want his soul? Do they want his body? Because on the, they could easily just possess his body and then keep it on the down low and no one will know they're in there for long enough. So what do they really want? Well, like every spirit is, has, yeah. yeah. Everyone has their own motivation and, and some spirits will be drawn to that hand just because they're naturally drawn to it. And they're, they're not there for any specific reason. But I think that some spirits sort of have figured out how to abuse this gateway and this doorway so mm -hmm. yes we'll leave that with that <laughs> back at me you guys you, you kind of toy with these expectations of anyone that has obviously consumed a lot of like ghost story films but even just like told scary stories at parties and whatnot because my my sense of it is you're not really talking about heaven or hell and you don't call these things out as demons so you kind of avoid this religious uh direction which is where a lot of movies tend to go 
that you know they it's a bait and switch it's ghost and then ultimately demon but you guys kind of are just like this is a bleak afterlife where there's no heaven and hell am i on the right path here and talk about the decision to do that well for us it's it's always the paranormal has always been a um obsession of ours like yours and yeah like yours yeah. like i i've always loved going to haunted places when we get when we travel somewhere we always look what's the most haunted location i don't know if i necessarily believe in it but i love hearing from psychics people that have had those supernatural experiences and and uh um with the with the biblical references maybe maybe not you know in the film but like with the uh that that uh, a, a paranormal obsession is something that we've always been drawn to and like I love, like, we stayed at the Conjuring House, the real Conjuring House, and we brought all these haunted dolls from all over the world to, like, stay in there with us and, like, try and get something to happen. Yeah. I'm always fascinated by by all that stuff. And I don't know what that, there's and, a lore and, there. And that, that was the fun of this film as well, was to really iron out our mythology and put together our mythology Bible. And and uh, we've broken down everything from all the spirits, all their backstories, how they died, why they're drawn to these kids. We've, we've broken down everyone that's had the hand leading up to this point. Uh, so so that was the fun of this film as well. And we got so carried away when we we're meant to be delivery script pages. We got yeah. so carried away. There was a day when we had to deliver a draft, and it's like I'm going to drop. No, but we've got this Bible. Yeah, and, yeah. And so we've got some extra ripping. stories. Yeah, it was so fun to just riff on it and like just bounce stories back and forth. Well, you'll find it. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, also, like, yeah, I've stayed at the Conjuring House. Super creepy. Lots of locations uh, over here that you guys need to be checking out. Um, but the uh, you really get the sense that you did have this this rule book, this mythology book. If you peek under the hood, it seems like there's a lot of ideas going back and forth here, um, yeah. which also, I guess, leads to the, uh, the the sequel question. And I know you, I've read a lot that you guys basically you filmed this prequel uh, of Duckett and Cole right up top. But the yeah. sequel, as much as you can say about it, does that pick up right after we we leave off at the end of the film? There's, there's, I've, I've started, when we were writing the first film, we were writing scenes for a second film and it was both ways. It was really being attached to these characters and exploring what happens in this aftermath and where that story goes from there. And then it was also exploring another set of characters. And so that that's, uh, this thing that I'm, I'd be really stuck on and try, I'd be struggling to figure out. I think a little bit, but uh, it's like what, yeah, what, what route to take? Yeah, like, what's the most exciting to us, and then like what would be exciting as well to the audience? I know like a new character would be good, but man, we love the world that was painted in the in the first film as well. So continuing that on would be amazing. But yeah, the, uh, I said that we need the green light from A twenty four. Yeah, A twenty four. Where's this sequel? <laughs> I sure. think it's on the way based on the box office, but uh, the oh, for. I, you know, OK, so one of the shows I do is called Paranormal Caught on Camera. OK, and people send clips of like supposed paranormal activity and like we respond to it. And one thing I've really taken note of, and I think you guys can pick up on this, is when there's like this important moment that people are trying to document, they suck so bad at filming it, even though we have these 4K cameras in our pocket. What is happening with people that like in that moment? Instead of getting like a good, you know, uh, landscape mode, they're going portrait mode, crappy settings. What's happening? I think that people get really overwhelmed by the experience. Oh, oh my God. God. Or they're faking it. Or they're faking it. But also I can imagine that being that terrified and your instinct is to pull this up, but you're also not a paranormal ghost hunter, I guess. You're just someone that this is happening to. I can see being caught up in that moment and, and tripping and, and you know, I, I can see that happening. There's a guy also in Australia that he doesn't believe in the paranormal, but he gets people to send him photos and he debunks them. Like he goes, this is not real because of this and because of that. And I remember him telling me there's one photo I could never explain. And it was at this, uh, it was in a cemetery where a family was burnt alive in a house and then they got their bodies got transported to this cemetery Kapunda cemetery south australia and um he has this picture and it looks like a little kid like like walking and he's like i was alone there and this is the only photo i won't say it's real but i can't say that it's not because i can't debunk it yeah i mean i've seen some stuff that is actually pretty compelling um yeah you're gonna I, show us stuff i'd love I, to see that i will yeah well it's what do you what do you think that American so I'm originally from Florida I live in New York City but Florida is sort of like the diet version of Australia uh and also quite weird and wild but 
what do you think American audiences could learn from Australia as far as like horror goes? Because you guys got great lore, you've got great horror stories, and still we haven't fully uh, been exposed to all of it over here. Even in Australia, there's a weird cultural cringe for our own movies. Like people, Australians don't like watching Australian movies. So when we wanted to, we wanted to do something that was authentic. So to us, so shooting it in Australia made sense. Um, but it was also kind of like trying to erase that stigma a little bit because there was amazing stories that like, but even pe that people have and won't tell like be because of that, there's like this kind of a wall that you walk into in Australia for some reason. So I, I hope that stigma kind of goes away. Like, and with horror at uh, Berlinale, which we went to and, and Sundance, like a lot of the horror midnight stuff was uh, the Australian stuff. So I feel like that stuff is starting to disappear. Yeah, you know, the indigenous, the indigenous story time stuff that is, that is amazing. There's incredible so much incredible great, stories there. Yeah, yeah. Incredible stories uh, there as well that I hope people can tell as well. Like, in, uh, yeah, and that stuff is like truly terrifying when you add in like shapeshifters and like uh, some really creepy entities that the indigenous people are talking about. The uh, just a quick aside, but how do I get the character Jade's ringtone? What's the story with that? Because I love that. Oh my ringtone. gosh. It was such a viral thing in Australia, this thing called the Crazy Frog Ringtone. And um, I, I, I based characters loosely on some people that I know and someone that I uh, based Jade on uh, had that ringtone that was very popular in like the early 2000s. And I was like, why do you have that? And then we're at a funeral and then her phone ran off, went off at the most inappropriate time. And that thing, ding, 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 started happening. In the most, like, you know, somber moment. It was like, oh, my God, put your phone on silent. And so, I, I don't know. I just wanted to sort of, I just remember that moment and it really yeah, like, funny Yeah, like, going off and, at the wrong time. At the wrong time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so put that I, I feel bad for our music uh, supervisor. He, uh... That that song is like owned by like five different people in five different like countries, and he was saying he's like, "Do you have to use that song? Can you, can you like, is there another ringtone we can use that's similar?" Well, so like it's, it's very be, very artistic that it has to be this song. It's because yeah, yeah. the crazy frog was a weird Australian like <laughs> yeah. phenomenon, and I remember it got banned because they used to do a video of it on. Uh, on and TV. and, it's, penis and it, its penis was out, and it's like ding ding ding, and then like there was this big outrage, and that had to get blurred, so that like it made it even like bigger. So yeah, yeah it was very famous. And now you've brought it to American audiences. Well done, congratulations! <laughs> yeah, it's your pop. It's your a pop culture uh, contribution of the many yeah. with the talk <laughs> the, to the, me. The, the, the ringtone. The resurgence. That's why we're going to be remembered. Bringing the ringtone. The, the crazy resurgence of somewhere. Crazy Frog. It's the licensing fees for the sequel for that song is going to just be off the roof. Like, you know, yeah, they're going to be like, yeah, a lot more expensive to do so, the yeah. ring. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I, I, any urban legends or lore specifically from your guys's childhood that really kind of stuck with you, not even something you have to turn into a movie, but like, what was like the haunted all haunted house at the end of your street kind of story? The boogeyman of your childhood. There was a road where this cyclist died going not cycle motorbike, motorbike motorcyclist, ride. right? Motorbike rider, motorcyclist. Uh yeah, motorbike Cyclists. rider. <laughs> he was going probably like 140 k's an hour down this road, and then legend has it if you go 140 k's down this road an hour kilometers not miles. kilometers not miles yeah, yeah uh you can see his headlights come on in your rearview mirror and it, and it go and so you can if you go the speed that he was at, at the time that he died if you drive the speed that he was going on that road you'll see his headlights go and then disappear at this tree at the tree that he, so that that he, he hit. hit so and it disappeared and that was a big thing it was actually, it was a dangerous thing because kids really are trying to do it. Yeah, teenagers were doing it, and like when we were growing up, there was a lot of those like deaths from teenagers just driving around. So there were these massive, sh strict laws put into place of all right after twelve, kids, you are driving, and you can't drive with friends in the car. Like so, these laws are all, and that was kind of a bit of a part of that because people were trying to do it, recreate it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like that kind of story because there's a lot of those stories that are. Uh, a lady in white or over here like a civil war ghost but meanwhile there's these kind of very vibrant stories that are also modern and contemporary I mean, in new orleans i know of a story of like a uh, a headless motorcyclist you know like a, a kid that lost his head so now you'll see the headless motorcyclist i love these kind of updated ghost stories is that something that you kind of want to explore more i mean obviously the door is wide open after talk to me. Would you want to look into more modern ghost stories or more 
modern creepy stories? Yes, I've got one that I'm working on outside of our other film that we finished. Uh, bring it back. Uh, there's a new one that I'm working on that is another modern horror story, uh, ghost story, and uh, urban legend. So I'm so excited to. I just thought of a story that's real, but it's not a ghost story, but it was so scary that I experienced. I was driving once in this, like I was doing the speed limit, 3 a.m. in the morning, and then the police just shoo, shot past me, no lights on or anything. And I was like, what am I doing the speed? And they, they're they speeding. And I started like kind of just going faster because they were. <laughs> and I was kind of like, like kind of like mirroring them. And they went down my street where I was uh, like living and I, I followed them and they went around to where this like dead end like road was. And I was like, oh, I know how to get here through a back way through this like little forestry around the side. So I drove around, around it's like 3.30 in the morning. I got out, I walked through this forest uh, and then I was like, looked and I could see that I like, through the house, like where the house they were going to. And they were speaking to this guy like, where is he? We know where he is. And the guy was like, no, I don't know where he is. He's like, where is he? You're like, you got to tell us right now. You're going to be in big trouble. And he's like, he's not here. And I'm like watching and I hear from my, like a twig snap from behind me. I was like, and I turned around and there was a guy like standing like in like, like probably like uh, just a few feet from me. Like just like, and you just watching him, we just looked at each other. And he was like, like seeing or, and I just had this, I, I just had this feeling that it was something wrong with this guy. Like, and like, we were just looking at each other. He was like to see if I was going to like yell out or something. And then he's like, he just started walking down the, down, like down through the forestry out the other way. And I was like, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't, I didn't want to snitch him out. Cause I don't know what he did, but hopefully it wasn't something too bad. That is <laughs> that, that was is terrifying. Le- that was legitimately creepy. I was expecting like, maybe, I don't know, like a Yaoi story or something, but that's, uh, <laughs> Yeah. And this big dragon, ghost dragon, came and, and took me away. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, well, also, uh, speaking of Bring Her Back, uh, as we wrap up, uh, can you tease a little bit about what that film is, what we can look forward to in that film? Uh, it's, I think, probably scarier than Talk To Me. I, I, that's all I can say, is that it's probably scarier than Talk To Me, and it's less fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot it's like a, a lot more into uh, psychological and uh it's a it's grim oh, yeah I yeah like, I, I yeah just grim. Yeah, probably i'd say that yeah i well i mean as far as the fun element goes something that i think is really worth mentioning is i mean you guys really seem to strike gold with this cast and sophie wilde mia is even though she's going through stuff at the beginning of the movie and then obviously throughout the movie She's likable and then normal, kind of normal, even though she's racked with grief. Do you, do you look at this and just feel like we lucked out with this lead in this film that can convey all of that and the creepy stuff? Well, yeah, we we felt so honored and we fought so hard to get her. And yeah, we lost a million dollars out of the budget by casting her and we reinvested our fees together. Our producer reinvested our fee, her fees together just because we were so confident in her as a performer and her as a person. And we it was just, like yeah. casting for two years. Like because of COVID, like it was like we were casting for two years. So we really had time to dive in. And, and it was hard to find the people, but we knew from their first auditions that they were right. Um, but it does make me a bit nervous going to the second film. Like, if we don't have Sophie, my God, that's terrifying. Yeah, really. like yeah, Sophie's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah. All right. A couple quick hit questions and then we got to go. But first off, I know you've got the the mythology, the lore all written out. Give me a quick backstory of at least one of the ghosts. And we've got French singer. We've got the little girl. We've got the old woman. Uh, Give me give me just a backstory on one of these. I can do one. Oh, Uh, no, no, you don't. There's say things in the sound that allure to how they died. The, every spirit. There's a lot that's told through sound design with the with the spirits. I noticed yeah. the water with the drowning one. And then there's oh, the that's one. You got one with the questions. Other, <laughs> the others too. Yeah, with the okay. Others too. Uh, next question as we wrap up. Um, no animals were harmed and no dogs were kissed. Solid in the <laughs> credits. Uh, <laughs> Best had, credit line ever. Yeah, someone asked us about it. Why did you? I was like, did you see the credits? Because, yeah, the credits. Uh, no, stayed, no, was it was a, a dog's puppet head, a puppet head of the dog that, that Otis the actor kissed, and then we got a plate shot of the actual dog licking the owner's palm, and we stitched it together. All right, and finally, who is the brother that will continue filming during a possession versus the brother that's going to try to shut it down and help out? You definitely would be the one to like keep filming. Probably. Like I, I was once I did this stunt and I jumped and I was supposed to hit this windshield and roll over the top of it. 
And because it was already cracked, my foot went straight through the windshield, completely destroyed my leg. And then Danny was rolling. And Danny was, all right, let's just get a close up of that. I'm like, dude, my leg is about to fall off. He's like, wants to keep it. It was not going to fall off. It was going to fall off. It was hanging like, by the bone. And then this ghost dragon he came had and three, dragged me away. He had like three stitches. What a cow. Was 38 stitches in my knee. Uh, it, because, luckily, the I seat, needed the close up. Luckily, this, yeah, he did. But luckily, the seat was forward, like we did, because if it wasn't, my leg would have gone like all the way through. Oh, it's horrible. And he still would have kept filming. Danny still would have filmed if uh, I didn't say, okay, but you know what? I didn't say stop filming. I said, I'll just get it quick because I think I got to go to the hospital. <laughs> but that's how you film a ghost dragon. You know, that's, that's how you get footage. Uh, guys, uh, congrats again. I hope you're really enjoying just this ride as well. And hey, let me know. You come out to New York City and you want to see some weird shit or wherever. Hopefully they bring you out to New York Comic Con even. Congrats. And uh, I got to let you go. But enjoy the rest of this ride, man. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon, I hope. Thanks right, so thanks. much. Cheers. Bye. And that was Danny and Michael Filippo, twin brothers and directors of the new A24 horror movie hit Talk to Me, which is in theaters now. Have you seen the film? What did you think? And how does it fit within paranormal lore. Let me know. Email me at talkingstrange at denofgeek.com. Plus, do you have stories of the strange and unusual? Do you have guest suggestions or questions about me or the show? Email talkingstrange at denofgeek.com. And come join the fun in our Patreon, patreon.com slash Aaron Sagers for movie watches, trivia, live streams, surprise guests, cocktail recipes, and more. And you can pick up cool Spooky Nerd merch at SpookyNerdShop.com. I'm Aaron Sagers, and this has been a bonus episode of Talking Strange. Until next time, be kind, stay spooky, and keep it weird.